Okay, so I told you guys a little bit about this 2015 3.5 liter EcoBoost F-150 uh, this morning. Uh, update is the porcelain was cracked for cylinder two spark plug. It had all brand new ignition coils and everything. But whoever installed the spark plugs was either using an electric ratchet to finish them up and then tighten it, snug it, or they were just careless. And they cracked the plug with their socket. You can see the crack line all down the spark plug. So the customer said, you know what, just redo it anyway. Put all new plugs and stuff in there anyway because I don't trust what they did. Put new boots on my coils and stuff and then replace the one coil on that one cylinder because I don't know if any damage would done with me driving it the last couple weeks with it misfire like like that. No. He said just take care of it, make it right. I don't care, just do it. So whoever installed the spark plugs on that was causing that misfire at speeds over 70 mile an hour or under hard load. And it would misfire on cylinder two, arcing out inside the sleeve in the head. And then uh, once you would let out of it, it would calm down and it would run normal. So that was an update with that. You guys remember Miss Helen Johnson, the one that we just did the pay it forward thing. And we replaced the CV axle and stuff in her Mercedes for her to help her. You know, she's on SSI, a sweet lady that we did on the channel. And we started the funding for other people that may need help in the future. They really need help. Um, I thought she was going to do us in, man. I seen the color ID. It popped up. And it said, Helen Johnson. And I was like, uh-oh. Here we go. What did we do wrong? The whole job was free. It was $1,331 for the job. And what did we do wrong? And I find out. She's like, well, there's supposed to be a cover in my trunk. And you guys replaced my battery for free for me under interstate battery warranty. But my cover never got put back in my trunk. And I said, ma'am, I don't think any of the guys here would have done that. I think they would have put everything back exactly the way they found it. These aren't the kind of guys that do that type of stuff. And she said, I know it was there when I dropped it off. And I said, I'm thinking to myself, here we go. Here we go. You do something good, and then you get burned for it, and then they want more. They want more. Well, I went, grabbed my buddy. I said, let's go in the room let's look at the cameras went back to both dates that it was in the shop and went through the entire camera logging they never had pulled a, a rear floor or a trunk mat out of the car it was never in it to begin with <laughs> <coughs> so they didn't forget to leave it in there they didn't take it out and throw it away it was never there and i went back and i said well miss johnson I, the best i could do is i can order one for you i can find a cheap one on ebay for that car of yours but my guys they said that they never seen one in there they were literally sitting on top of the tire when they were reaching back towards the rear seat of that car because it's such a pain to change the battery back there and there was nothing in there anyway i go back and i'm like look i'm gonna be nice i'm gonna order a floor cover for you because i feel like maybe you misplaced it before you brought it in here my guys didn't do it we did not forget to put that in your vehicle so uh, i'm gonna take care of you that's not something that we did. I, I got full video footage of the camera, outside, inside the building, everything. And we have a really nice security system here that, that it covers everything. Uh, that system, you, you never had a, a mat in the trunk or a, a floor cover in the trunk. And she says, okay, well, I appreciate it, baby. Thank you. She gets off the phone. I go ahead and order it. It's 75 bucks plus $68 shipping. I didn't pay it out of the pay it forward funding because I didn't really feel like that was everybody's responsibility to pay for, that if I was gonna make that choice, that should be on me first and not uh, not something that got pulled out of the funding for general help. And uh, I paid for it, it's like $150, $155. Said it would be here before the 23rd, and uh, or the 23rd, 23rd through the 24th, and <clears throat> um, she calls back about 20 minutes later cancel the order cancel the order and Miss Ellen she don't talk fast she don't get emotional and hyper like that she's a you know 85 year old lady and she just very calm and very 
clear and concise about what she's saying and doing. Uh, and she cancel the order. I found it. It was in my garage. And I was like, thank you, Miss Helen. Thank you for not doing us like that. It was just a misunderstanding. I thought for sure that I had made a good choice in helping this lady out because I got a good feeling about those things. And, uh, and I started to think for a second, man, she's kind of doing me dirty right now. And she came through and she cleared it all up. So I thought Miss Helen had us. I thought she, she took us for a ride there on the on the gravy train of free. Uh, but, you know, that's, in, that's human instinct to think that type of stuff. You give somebody the benefit of the doubt and then they turn around and try to do that to you. And I see on the camera that it wasn't our fault. But I'm still going to try to help her out anyway. And then she said, you know what, I was wrong. I was wrong. I found it in the garage. Cancel the order. So I'm glad she called. I was able to cancel the order. Hopefully the shipper doesn't uh, ship it because it was only like 35, 40 minutes. And he didn't even confirm it until like the 30 minute mark since I had ordered it. I think we're all right, but I thought Miss Helen had us. Anyway, next story. So I stopped in this homemade sausage place right across from the Jewel off of, uh, it's right by Ridgeland and what is the freaking street? Uh, by Phil's Pizza. Um, Ridgeland and it's just past Phil's is at Ridgeland and 89th so I stop at the homemade sausage place on down the road right across from Jewel and uh, I go in there and <coughs> <coughs> excuse me getting over this pneumonia stuff sucks but they say you gotta exercise your lungs so I stop in there and I'm walking around and I say yeah I might do like a food review video or something on the food here it looks pretty nice homemade authentic smells great inside the place it's like a Polish place, and uh, it smells amazing. The food all looks like really authentic Polish, like all the different types of sausages and bacon and tenderloin. And the girl behind the counter was like, "Oh, so, so uh, we're gonna be on YouTube? That's gonna be cool, or something, you know, something like that." And I was like, "I usually try to get permission first before I just come in and start filming. So I, I'll maybe I'll eat the food." See if I like it, and then come back, do a little video if the owner or manager is okay. But that's it. I don't talk bad about companies. I only talk good about companies. If I have something bad to say about a company, I typically just move on and don't do business with them. That's how I do things. And she was like, oh, that's cool. Well, the lady that was standing next to me was listening to us talk about automotive and all that other stuff. And she says, well, my husband always just fixed my car. He's been fixing my car for like 20 years or whatever it was. And I said, I don't know what kind of came over me. But I said, yeah, until he needs to take it to somebody like me. And she said, oh, no, he, he's never done that. I, I said, yeah, until he screws up and he needs to take it to somebody like me. And she said, he's never screwed up. And I said, ma'am, I've heard that stuff my whole life. Uncles, aunts, brothers, and everything else. You know, the stuff he's doing is probably pretty simple. He's not doing engine teardowns and transmission teardowns and stuff like that. I'm trying to figure out where the computer is failing or there's a shorted wire or something like that. He ain't doing that in the garage. <clears throat> so she got quiet. She walked away. She was smiling. And I was like, well, it just came out. It just came out because I, I get tired of hearing, oh, my brother, my dad. You know how many times my brother, my dad, my neighbor, my uncle, my sister, my, my whatever, and they completely screwed it up all because they knew what they were doing and then it ends up in my shop. Yeah, I've heard that story. It's like a broken record. Uh, yeah. Your husband fixes your stuff. That's great. Until he needs somebody like me. When he screws up and he bites off more than he can chew. I don't I don't know why I said it, but I did. It just came out. It is what it is. We move on to the next story. Then we had, <clears throat> we had a guy last week. Was it? No, the beginning of this week. Drop off a 2007 BMW 3... Th 330. I don't know if I'm saying it right. <clears throat> 330xi won't start it'll crank but it won't start called check engine truck up after i've been looked after a while i let my guys look at it for a while they couldn't figure it out uh my partner um he went out he looked at it <clears throat> and he couldn't figure it out so i said i ain't supposed to be working on anything but i'll go give it a shot and <clears throat> i went to the dme which is the pcm and i know there's a relay for it and some fuses 
So I was checking and I'm like, these fuses ain't getting power. I don't know exactly how the operating strategy is though. I don't have a clear printout. I couldn't find it in all data. Eventually I did find it, but I reached out to my buddy, Check Engine Chuck. Uh, he's on TikTok if you haven't. He's got like 250 or 275,000 followers plus. He's growing like crazy. And he's really good at diag. <coughs> diag. And <clears throat> if I need to lean on him for like an odd car that I'm not used to, he's always there for me. So I really appreciate that from him. And he had helped me walk through. You know, he's like, I think, you know, you're, you're on to something here. Uh, you got to have the, the, the relays are known for being bad kind of messed up in those cars or something wrong with uh the connection at the computer um yeah, i had already checked the connection it was nice and tight uh, the relay uh, i individually tested the relay it was good <clears throat> sorry i'm getting over pneumonia so i get shorter breath in, in spurts and it causes me to slow down and i gotta try to try to push through the doctor said that's normal but you gotta practice and you gotta work through that that's how you get your speech completely back. <coughs> so, I verify while I'm on the phone with Chuck, just out of nowhere. I was like, oh, let me check my white and my white and gray wire. It goes back to the DME. Oh, I got no ground on this, so this relay is not even going to activate. I wonder what happens if I, if I supply my own ground <laughs> and try to start the vehicle. So I supply my own ground. And then I go test at the Vanos and the, not the Vanos, yeah, the Vanos and the uh, ignition coils and everything else. Now we got power with me supplying my own ground. I go to crank it over, still won't start. So let me shoot a little giggle juice. A little starting fluid. Pss, pss, pss. Give it a few shots. And the vehicle starts right up. Sorry, it went through a little coughing spill. It's all normal. Um, anyhow. Um... Start it up. Then I'm like, I noticed there's no RPM at all registering on the dash. Lights and stuff are turning on, but I, when I'm cranking and I've got plenty of battery power, there's no RPM. So I'm wondering if I have a crank sensor issue. But I can't communicate with the ECM. I can't get good solid codes, codes out of the ECM to figure out where to go. ECM is grayed out and it's not on board. So I'm like, what the heck are we going to do now? I got power, I got ground at the ECM. Yeah, I have everything there that I'm supposed to get. But the ECM won't communicate. I check my comm wires. My comm wires are good. I, I can talk to the car. I can talk to everything. The ECM is just flat out done. So I'm talking to Chuck about it. And Chuck's like, you know, I would get real intimate with the customer and be like, look, dude, I need you to be straight, brutally honest with me about the stuff that's been done to this. I'm not going to ju judge you. I'm not going to do any of that. Just be honest with me with the work that's been done to this car. Has anybody jump started this car the wrong way, put a battery in the wrong way, hooked up jumper cables the wrong way, and had a bunch of arcing and sparking going on? And I'm talking to the guy, and he says, "Oh, I put the battery in myself. I put it right in. It was, it was fine." Before that, what led you to replacing that battery? Well, I took it to a guy on the street, and he was looking at the car because there was some other stuff wrong with it, and he put a battery that was too small. So it looks like a freaking marine battery in this BMW. And I mean, it's not that quite that big, but it's long and it's wide. And he said he put a battery that was like a third of the size of the battery should be. You can flop the battery around inside the case. And I bet you he probably put it in there the wrong way before correcting it. <clears throat> and that's why the vehicle wouldn't start anymore after I got it back from him. So look, man, I hate to do this to you. I got about four hours tied up in this vehicle and you only guaranteed one. That's my fault for not calling you, but I got to pull the plug on it. I got to stop. I can't move forward and keep wasting my time and my guy's time. I need a computer for this thing before I even move forward. I hate to do that. We're really, really busy right now. At least I gave you, I found I found where we're at, where we need to go. Now we need to get there in order to move forward to figure out the other stuff that was pre the battery issue that was going on. So what are we doing? Oh, man, I don't know if that car is even worth that then. What's it going to cost? I say you're probably looking at a computer install programming. Everything's somewhere around $1,000 ballpark. <coughs> and that's if, he can, if I can even get one. I told him I don't know if I can put my hands on one. But last time I ordered one, uh, similar situation. 
it was like 750 bucks and then uh programming and stuff was another 190 dollars blah 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 <clears throat> or i can order one that's pre-programmed we can go different ways but i need to know if you're willing to put about a grand into it to move forward to put the computer in get it communicating everything on board and move forward from there because i can't move forward without a good computer in it and this computer is not good and he says uh i don't know i'll come talk to you monday let's figure it out then probably not probably just gonna get rid of the vehicle i didn't know that it was gonna be this much to figure out why it won't start so oh, yeah man as soon as you as soon as you drive that vehicle into a shop better have your wallet out bmw bring my wallet and you gotta have it and if you don't get rid of it sorry quick stories random stories from one day y'all be blessed have a great night see you tomorrow talk to you tomorrow see ya